In this video, we're going to compare the modeling approach, the pros and cons between using forms to model something and using surfaces. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I want to talk about forms versus surfaces. This is something that I've mentioned several times in different videos where I might say that surfacing is probably a better tool for this or forms would be a little bit easier. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about the modeling process for something like this Ford Bronco. So originally I recorded an entire series on surface modeling it, but I'm not happy with the results. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna release those videos and I'll talk about why. So some of them are still very beneficial, so I probably will at least you know, put a few of them up, but I want to talk about the differences in the modeling approach. Now, at this point, there's already two series on form modeling a car, and I did a quick 10 or 12 minute video speeding through the modeling process of this Bronco here. Now, if we look at them from the side, they look very similar. There are some things that we're going to notice that are different between the two. The first thing that we'll notice is that visually, even though we don't have edges on, the one on the right looks a lot cleaner. And that's because we used straight lines, we used clean edges, and we had a lot of control over where those edges are. So when we take a look at things like the division between the roof and the hood, this is a straight line, this is a straight line, at least from the side view. Same thing with the windows, everything's straight and we've got a lot of control over whether or not those things have a lot of curvature. When we look at the same thing, when we're talking about the model with forms, I modeled the top as a separate body, which means that I actually had to have a separate edge here. Now, in reality, I could have split this after the fact with surfaces and had a straight line here and a straight line here, but I chose to do it as one body for just the top and one body for the main portion. So you can see that this is obviously not a straight line. It's a lot harder for us to control. And because of that, the interface between the top and the back it's not the same. There's a little bit of a, a spot there where they overhang that still needs a little bit of work. So those kinds of things are going to be one of the main differences between, you know, creating these straight lines or these straight edges in forms versus doing it with the surfacing tools. Another thing that we'll want to notice when we look at this is that the model on the right doesn't have nearly as much curvature. Now, the, the roof line is probably... The biggest spot. Now throughout the modeling process, when I did the one on the right, I didn't use any blueprints. I just used pictures. I had images that I was going off of and I had to make some guesses as to the angle of the A pillars and the top. Now originally when I modeled it, they were curving in quite a bit and it didn't look right and I, I made this decision or the change to bring them back out. Now, the problem that this introduces, if we take a look at the model, is that that original curve was actually right here in the timeline. This was one of the very early sketches. And if we scroll through, you can see there are a lot of sketches, a lot of surfaces, a lot of different things that happen after the fact, which means that any detail that got added, you know, partway through the model that really relied on that surface, things like projected edges, things like the top, where that all was, those are going to break and those are going to fail, which means that we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to remodel it. So if you make a pro if you make a decision early on in a model like this and it's incorrect, for example, I chose to do a very large surface for the entire side of the body. So this sweep here very early on is all based off of this one curve. If I go back and I try to change that curve, then what's gonna end up happening is downstream, I'm gonna cause a lot of problems. Now, it probably is, isn't gonna show up until we start to split surfaces. And let's see, these, these lower portions here are gonna be fine. So I can probably go all the way to this remove body for these wheel wells. And let's go ahead and roll the marker here. And let's modify this sketch. So if we edit this sketch and we pull this upper section in and I finish the sketch, some of it's gonna rebuild just fine. So you can see that we are able to pull that in. But as soon as I start to go past here and I start to make changes to the design where I'm sweeping and I'm using this, so it's gonna happen 
uh, pretty far down. Let's get further to these trims. Once I get to some of these, some of the sketches, the references that are using projections or intersections, you can see that the original projection was based off that A pillar cut, which ends right here. And now it's missing. So this means that I'm gonna have to go back and I'm gonna have to fix some of these things. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna do that in this video, and I actually do talk about that in one of the videos I recorded. But when we look at this, that is a drastic difference. You can see this one arcs up and, and curves up. And if we make those kinds of design decisions and we have problems very early on in the design process for the form body, that is a much different problem that we can fix because we just simply go into the form body and we make those changes. We can decide if we want to pull the A pillar out or change this, the shape of the windscreen. And if we make those adjustments, for example, if I decide that this A pillar here really needs to come back a bit, I can just use modify edit form. I can pull it back a little bit. I can finish the form, reconvert it to a surface, and those references will still hold true. The body gets converted to a surface, and anything else that we did, as long as we don't add or remove edges, as long as we don't make drastic changes to the geometry, then it should be fine. You will notice that it did cause some issues for some of these loft features. And when we find out what those are, you can see that those loft features have to do with the top. So nothing to do with the geometry change. It's just this was actually a problem area in the modeling process. So I'm going to control Z. I'm going to go back to where it was fine here. Uh, but, but you can see that that is a difference between the two. We are able to easily and quickly make those design changes at the base of it. So there is a lot to think about when we try to decide which modeling approach is best. And there are elements that do happen after the fact, like splitting up the windows and doing the trim around the glass. These are things that generally I do with surfacing tools rather than doing it in the model. And if you watch the fast forward video, you'll notice that when I originally started this design, I actually modeled in this crease and I ended up removing it. I created a copy of that surface and then I deleted it and I patched it. And then even later on in the modeling process, I tried again to add it back in. And the problem is it was just having too much of an effect on the surrounding curves. In order to get a detail like this in the form body, we're gonna have to add a lot of edges and a lot of additional control. And that gets pretty tricky. So features like that, those cleaner cuts, <clears throat> those tend to happen a little bit easier after the fact, where initially trying to do it in the form body are gonna be pretty tricky. Whereas ones on the hood, details like this little lip and this crease, uh, those are actually not too bad to do in the form body, but they do have an effect because the edges are actually curving away. So if we need those edges to be straight, then we need to do a little bit more control work here in order to get those edges straight. But we're always looking for four-sided patches whenever we're using the form tools. And sometimes we can't get around that, but these are things that, that we need to worry about. When we look at other areas that are problematic, the A pillars are, are usually a problem. You can see that there's a bad section right here. Now these are things that we can fix after the fact. That bad section is really, this is a loft that was done after the fact. And the reason that we have this weird wrinkle here is because the curvature at this vertex here is pulling or adding a lot of tension in this surface. So when we try to create something that has tangency with it, it tends to cause problems. So these areas, even though they're surfacing after the fact, these are things that we're gonna have to really spend a lot of time on to fix. So looking at these two models, again, they're very similar from the side. There's, there's not a drastic difference from the side. The one that was done with form bodies, the general shape is much easier to go back and adjust. If we wanna flare the fenders differently, if we wanna um, adjust the location of the wheel well, say we're going to change the axle location, we can do that very easily on this body. And we really can't do that as easily on the one on the right, because other stuff tends to rely on it. There are sketches, depends on how those sketches were created, and uh, some of those changes really tend to break the models. So if you're going into a project like this, then you, you have to really decide, am I just trying to make a visual representation of the body. And if that's the case, the forms are gonna be really good. They will be great at curvature continuity, making things nice and smooth. Once you start to add sharper details, that's where things get really tricky. 
because creases don't do a great job, especially if the crease has to end somewhere. If the crease, like for, for example here, if that crease has to end at a surface that we want to have curvature continuity, then it becomes really difficult. It becomes really tricky. So things like that are tough to do. But in general, the overall shape can be easily achieved using the form tools. That's probably the best thing. Going back, what I would probably do for this model is I would combine the top and the main body and then split them later. And um, same thing with the tailgate, the doors. These are things that you don't really break up in a form body. You want to keep that curvature continuous across them, and then you'll get a much cleaner cut using sketches and trimming them or splitting the body. So that's really one of the things that I would go back and change or fix if I was going to do it again. When we look at the form body, again, that feature happens really early on. We can make any adjustments or changes that we need to it at a very early stage. And it's, it really isn't going to have a drastic effect downstream. So keep that in mind that um, you have a lot more control over these organic smooth shapes. And even though this is a very blocky you know, truck, a blocky body, which the lines were originally from the very early 80s. So uh, this design, even though it is blocky or boxy, it is still something that can be done in forms. So I, I'm going to at least release the first couple of videos from surfacing of the Bronco, and I'll probably add some comments in there, things to avoid, things that I would, you know, be careful of, because I do think that the process is important to understand. There are a lot of nuances, things that you need to be able to, to do and understand to model something that way, and I think that that is important. So I, I do want to release at least the first couple of videos. There were, I think, 12 in total, and I'll probably not release all of them, but Again, I have to really go back and look at them and see if that is going to be something that is going to be helpful to somebody. I really just don't want somebody to follow along with the videos and get to a situation where they've been following along and then the end result isn't something that you, you're going to be proud of. So that's really, that's really the sticking point for me is uh, I really want to be careful with that. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of information on kind of the differences between the modeling process and, and understanding some of the pitfalls of doing it the surface modeling way and the benefits of doing it the forms way. If you have any questions, please let me know. This was just meant to be a little bit of a, an informative video to talk about the differences I will start putting out some of the surfacing videos so you can see that process and, and better understand it. But um, I, again, any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.